All right, now that we're done seeing Nekoma, I'm ready to get back to Karasuno and Inarizaki, episode 19. This one's called Ultimate Challengers. I am ready. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with Haikyuu, season 4, episode 19. It really does feel weird to say that. We are getting really close to the finale of season 4. Now, with that being said, I don't know what's going to lead on us into season 5. I don't know where we're, we're going to end here. So, I'm re really excited to see where we leave off on a cliffhanger, where we're going to be sort of going into the next season, and when that's going to be happening. Because I am just so ready for that, and I'm so ready for this episode. I say we hop right on into it. Remember, if you guys want early access and full length to this show and all the other shows I'm watching, we do have that Patreon. We are four episodes ahead over there. Links are in the description for you guys, as always. If you guys want to support me and Patreon's not really your thing, if you guys could just leave a like and a nice comment, it really does help me with that YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you guys always know exactly when I post over here on the Dapper channel. Don't forget to follow me on all my social medias, Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter, at Dapper Darius. And don't forget, we do have a PO box, guys, in case you guys ever want to send me any art, mail figures anything and everything is much much appreciated links for all that are always in the description uh let's hop right on into this uh, haikyuu season 4 episode 19 the ultimate challengers let's do this with their professional orchestral band school just <laughs> playing as he I saw the scoreboard, but I didn't really look at the score, so I'm guessing we're a little bit in the set, too. Oh. You know what? That's a valid point. That most definitely with his skill, he always is avoided. This is his first time being... T oh, wow. Well, thinking about it, it's actually a good thing that I chose Nishinoya as my shirt this time because Nishinoi is being targeted. This is my boy. He's one of the backbones. That's... That is very good mental games. Yeah, I'd be running through their heads. I love how he silences the crowd every time. He did call the jump floater. They knew the four steps was the jump floater and... Two service assassins against the enemy team's libero is so big, especially it being one of Nishinoya's caliber. And like they were saying earlier, he's never personally been targeted, so he's never had to deal with something like this. Ah, uh, oh, I didn't even think about that. Because it's so narrow, if it even veers off by a millisecond, yeah. Damn, okay. That's literally his only job. This is nerve wracking. It's never been this reverse roll, huh? Wow, he's he is trying to get his mental right. He is focused. So the animation is still a bit wonky, but I completely understand COVID. I'm not gonna judge them for it. Ooh. Okay. It's so annoying how they can switch off though. How Osamu is <laughs> Osamu is also very yeah, they're twins, like Suki, Suki, one touch king. That was, uh, was that Kita? Or was that Suna? Sorry for that little brain fart right there. I was just so lost in what actually happened. His head turned to the side and it was well, was looking to be a great block from Tsukushima. Um, I completely forgot whether that was Suna or Kita, so I just I had to refer back to my notes real quick. Um, but that is Suna, who people have been telling me look out for him. He's kind of a underrated, I don't know, maybe low-key player, but... What the hell was all that? He said, you're a great blocker, Tsukushima, typically, you know, jackass. But, like, I need to see one of those spikes in action, you know? Sorry for the pause, guys, but I just had to make sure I got all my details in order. Score was 17-7 to 7 in set two. 
It says wide contact point from side to side. Oh my god, that is way further. I, like I'm saying, I want to see one of these in action. Ooh. Okay. I like how they showed that using his whole upper body. I like that. I just don't know how we're going to bring this back. Nice, Aron. Good receive. That's us. Hit it out. Oh, multiple. Was that over, Suna? Nope, going to Suna again. Kageyama with the backup. He went around Kageyama? Bow, how? This man is something else, I tell you. 18 to 9. Pretty standard, but so that's why they went that way and he went around them. That oh, that's so crazy. He literally fainted with his body. This is a new <laughs> this is a new challenge that we're facing right here. Ooh, nice, Kagayama. He saved that? A run again? Ooh. Wasn't Ukai saying he's just outside top three spikers, aces, in Japan? Ooh, a run. Come on. That must be so tiring just keep jumping jumping and spiking and jumping and spiking truly tore through for that point over to my main man nice that was a good cross <laughs> oh what is he practicing just getting in that mental simulation of doing it over and over again in his visual training. <laughs> I like it. Whatever you can do to get any sort of training down, I applaud it. Hell yeah, Suwara. I love when he comes out and be, does the old captain shit. He comes out and be, is the dad every once in a while. He has to, though, you know? Make those five seconds count. Hell yeah. I love Sugawara. Ooh, good one touch, Hinata. Nice save, Sugawara. <laughs> he's hustling. Oh, he's went right back up for it after that. Nice. Good block, boys. That went out. I didn't even I didn't even see. I'm an idiot. That was a block on us, but we blocked it out. Aiski. Ooh, okay. That's us. Nice, nice. I know, that's kind of messed up. That is horrible. Why would you guys do that? Yeah, it's horrible for somebody's morale. That is uh, Kita. My boy Kageyama. I'm telling you, I want to play volleyball sometime. Ooh, ooh, that was a beautiful serve. I won't even lie. I know. 
That was a beautiful serve. Ooh, an Arizaki timeout. Maybe they want to stop that rhythm of the no no touch aces, you know? You gotta keep the ball right there exactly how it was. Yep, just the way. I love how he spins it all the time when he serves. That's like his thing. Nice. Ooh, I couldn't even tell if that was in or out. It wasn't so fast. That's us? Let's go. I think that's us, right? Yes. Yes. If we are able... <laughs> we need a huge turnaround. It's exactly what we need. Oh, yeah. You can tell it's starting to, the frustration is building exactly what they wanted. Exactly what they wanted. Oh, Kageyama is looking beautiful with his sets. Serves everything. Okay, Hatsumu, who do you think you are? Okay, that was nice. That, that was nice. I gotta give that one to Hatsumu. That was nice. Is that Kita? Yeah, he's coming in. He was the one talking smack to the pinch server earlier. All right, let's see this. Ooh, I gotta say, you know me, always love the tactics, strategies, and everything that goes into volleyball that's not physical volleyball. Like, I loved how there's so much emphasis on mind games, targeting, scoping, sniping, you know, doing these little mental games, doing this, that, and the other, fainting. Like, there's so much that goes into volleyball that I just don't even realize and it makes so much sense like yes you are physically pushing yourself to the limit but also your perception and your mental force like there's so many aspects mentally that need to be there for such a physical sport and i love it and i just definitely was not expecting this going into volleyball whatsoever but the way they ended it with uh i'm, I'm almost positive his name is kita because he's the only one who i don't have like a specific thing for you know Oran, osamu atsumu suna um i got down heisuki's name he's the guy who did the pinch server today um, it's just, yeah, that's so interesting. I wonder how nasty Kita's, I wonder, uh, every time there's a, a little power spike they get, you know, like a Ron was popping off, we have to deal with him. Kita's popping off, or Suna's popping off, we gotta deal with him. Which, that was really cool, how they described it, how Suna was doing it, how normally they have a range of motion from like here to here, but his is way over here. So he's able to literally go and do whatever he wants and, and it doesn't even cost him his power because he's able to, his upper body strength is just so fucking pristine. I like that, uh, I like that description and it allows him way more flexibility in terms of his options in the air, in those mid-air fights, you know? Like he was facing this way, his arm was this way. And then so everyone was ready to defend this way. And then, I don't know how he's able to, like, the, physically to me doesn't make sense. But he's just so nasty. I love it. And I'm ready for it. And I say we hop into this next episode. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm excited to find out what happens in this finale. I feel bad for my man Nishinoya. But, you know, he has the mental fortitude of anyone. Same with Sugawara, who came in and, and was awesome for a little bit. Shout out to my boys. I'm ready in this next one. I'll see you guys in this next one. Thank you for liking, subscribing, all that jazz. Peace out, Network Squad.